previous video, we used arcs to add fixed radius curves into our shape. Now we're going to create some more freeform curves by utilizing Bezier curves and quadratic curves. Now the two methods that allow us to draw more freeform curves are called quadratic curves and Bezier curves. Now in this demo, I have both of them drawn out. At the top, we have what we call a quadratic curve. And a quadratic curve is defined by a beginning point, an ending point, and a single control point. Now the curves will normally be only this black line, but in this demo I've highlighted both the control points as well as the lines to and from the start and control points. So we define it by beginning a start and an end point and a control point. Now by manipulating this demo you can see how the control point affects the curve. So if we pull the curve more down and towards the right, we get this long beginning curve and then a short tight curve towards the end. You can see that our curve to begin with starts with the curve being very parallel to the line drawn from the beginning point to the control point and then begins to diverge and the same thing happens towards the end and it becomes more and more parallel to the point from the control point to the ending point. So a common use of a quadratic curve is maybe a corner in a box where you would normally have a right angle. Now instead of drawing your lines all the way to the corner, what you might want to do is draw your line almost to the edge and start a curve and place your control point right where the lines would intersect and then place your ending point some distance away from that point again. And this will give you a nice curved point and you can see how easy it is to define your points relative to a normal corner. Now let's look at the code that we use to create this curve. Now our quadratic curve starts like any other path with a begin path call. Then I create a move to call that moves to a start x and y, which would be the first point in our curve. Next we call the quadratic curve to method. And this takes a control point x and y and an ending point x and y. So the control point is this blue point right here, which will be invisible in your actual curve. And your ending point will be where your curve actually ends. So the further that your control point is out from the line drawn from your start to your end, the bigger of a curve there will be. Finally, we can just stroke it and we see our curve. Now similar but different to our quadratic curve is what we call a Bezier curve. And it differs in that it has two control points, a control point for the beginning and a control point for the end. And so as we move the different control points around, you can see that we have a different sort of curve evolving. Again, you can see how the curve becomes more and more parallel with the line drawn from the end point to the control point or the start point to the control point. And that's really useful when you want to connect the two line segments or two different shapes and have the curve be parallel or perpendicular to a certain point. Let's say we had another corner we could do a similar thing where if we had a line going from here and across, we could place our start point on that line and our first control point as an extension of that line. So if our line was going to the right, we draw our control point as an extension of that. Then we can place our end point at the corner and if our ending line is going up and down, we can place our, control, our second control point directly above and that'll create a nice angle. But compared to the quadratic curve, we have a lot more control. For instance, if we moved our control points much closer, you can see we get a longer section in the middle with a less tight corner. But you'll notice that we still, if we have a line coming out from here, we can still have our curve be a natural extension of that line because it starts going off in the same direction as the line instead of having some sharp corner like it would if we were going from here down to here. Now, since we have two control points, we can create much more complex shapes by manipulating the control points into different directions. With the quadratic curve, we can only have really one curve. We can adjust its sharpness in the different areas, but you can't have it curve one way and then the other. With a quadratic curve, we have all sorts of different options. So for instance, we can curve down and then curve the other way. And this is great for maybe connecting two different shapes. We can see the usefulness of a quadratic curve in this example here where we want to connect two different divs together with a flowing line. So in this case I want our line to come out of the right side and so I want it to appear that the wire is coming directly out of the box. 
So in this case, I put my beginning point right at the edge of the box here, at a control point some distance out, but directly out from the first point. Similarly, the end point is right here, but the control point for this exists somewhere out here. So that allows us to create a, a line that appears to be going directly into and out of our boxes. Now with a little bit of a change in the code, I can change how the two boxes are connected. Now instead of the point coming out with a rightward direction, I can now create a, a curve that goes this way. And so in this case, I still have my beginning point at the edge of the box, but now my control point is downwards, creating a downward looking curve. Now these curves can be integrated into any other shape. So if, for instance, I began with a move to, to the origin of 0, 0, and I instead draw a line to the beginning point, and at the end of our curve I draw a line to uh, 600, 400, we can see that we integrate a line with our curve. So a line going from here to here, then we can easily draw a curve and then continue drawing more and more lines. And the same thing can be done with our quadratic curve and maybe even integrate it into a shape. So here I've created a shape from 5100 and then to our beginning point, a curve to our end point and a line to another point, and I close out the path. So if we flip over, we can see we now have a shape that we can manipulate. Now we've seen how to draw all sorts of different shapes using the canvas. In the next video, we'll look at how to use transformations to make it easier to draw shapes anywhere on our canvas.